Question 1. Write 4 over 50 as a percentage. To make life a lot easier for us, I'm going to change the denominator, which is currently 50, to 100. So whatever you multiply the denominator with, you need to multiply the exact same number with the numerator. So what we should have is 4 over 50. I need to change this to 100, so what do I need to multiply 50 to get 100? Well, 2. And I'm going to multiply the numerator by 2 as well. So what we should have is 8 over 100. Now I'm going to change 8 over 100 to a decimal, which is 0 0.08. And then I'm going to multiply it by 100, which should give me 8%. And that's our final answer, 8%. Question 2. Write 1.59 correct to one decimal place. Well, the first decimal place is the 5. We need to look at the digit next to it, which is a 9. 9 is greater than 5, so we're going to round up. Therefore, our answer is going to be 1.6. Question 3. Write out the value of 3 raised to the power of 5. Well, 3 raised to the power of 5 can be rewritten as 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 times 3 is 81. 81 times 3 is 243. So that's our final answer. Question 4. Write down a six digit number that has 4 as its thousandth digit. You can only use the digit 4 once. So I'm going to use 364,000 as my answer. Question 5a. Change 35 centimetres to millimetres. So if we know that 1 centimetre is equal to 10 millimetres, how do we convert 35 centimetres to millimetres? Well, to do that, you need to multiply 35 by 10. So 35 by 10 is 350 millimetres. Question 5b. Change 7,700 millilitres to litres. So what we know so far is that 1,000 millilitres is equal to 1 litre. And we want to convert 7,700 milliliters to liters. So what we need to do is divide 7,700 by 1,000. So our answer should be 7.7 .7 liters. So what we should know is that one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. Now we want to convert 0 0.32 kilograms into grams. So how do we do that? I'm going to multiply 0 0.32 by 1000. So that will be 320 grams. So our final answer is 320 grams. Question 6. Margaret is thinking of a number. She says, my number is odd. It is a factor of 36 and a multiple of 3. There are two possible numbers Margaret can be thinking of. Write these two numbers down. So first of all, let me just write the factors of 36. So the factors of 36 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18 and 36. Okay, so from the list, which two numbers are a multiple of three and are odd numbers? There's only two. These are three and nine. So the two possible numbers are three and nine. And that's your final answer. Question seven. Moshan, Yusuf and Luke are going to play a game. At the end of the game, one of them will be first place one of them will be second place, and one of them will be third place. Use the table below to list all the possible outcomes of the game. 
the first possible outcome is Moshin finishes first, Yusuf finishes second, Luke finishes third. Second possible outcome is Moshin finishes first, Luke finishes second, and Yusuf finishes third. Third possible outcome is Yusuf finishes first, Moshin finishes second, Luke finishes third. The fourth possible outcome is Yusuf finishes first, Luke finishes second, Moshin finishes third. The fifth possible outcome is Luke finishes first, Moshin finishes second, and Yusuf finishes third. The final outcome is Luke finishes first, Yusuf finishes second, and Moshin finishes third. And that's your answer. Question 8. Neil buys 30 pens, 30 pencils, 30 rulers, and 30 pencil cases. What is the total amount of money Neil spends? So let's just focus on how much it would cost Neil to buy 30 pens. So pens. So from the information given to us in the question, it states that pens, you can get six for 82. So six pens for 82p. We require 30 pens. Okay, so we need five sets of six pens for 82. Therefore, I'm going to multiply 82p by 5. So 0 0.82 times it by 5, which will give me 30 pens. So it will be £4.10 to buy 30 pens. Now let's focus on the pencils. So pencils. Pencils again, it says 15 pencils for 45p. We need 30 pencils, so therefore I'm going to multiply 45p by 2. So 15 pencils for 45p. Uh, so 0 0.45 times it by 2, which is 0 0.90. So let's focus on the rulers now. Neil requires 30 rulers and he can get 10 rulers for £1.25. So therefore he needs 3 sets of 10 for £1.35. So I'm going to multiply £1.25 by 3. So 10 rulers for £1.25. So that would be one twenty-five times it by 3 which equals to £3.75 and the final one is a pencil case cost 37p and he nil requires 30 pencil cases so again I'm going to multiply 0 0.37 by 30 and it will be 11 pounds and 10 pence now I'm going to add them all together so 4 pounds and 10 pence plus 0 0.9 plus 3 pounds 75 plus 11 pounds and 10 pence which equals to 19 pounds and 85p that's your final answer question 9 emily drives 186 miles in three hours what is our average speed so to work out emily's average speed i'm going to divide 186 miles by three hours so 186 divided by 3 which equals to 62 so it's 62 miles per hour Sarah drives at an average speed of 58 miles per hour for 4 hours how many miles does Sarah drive? well to work out how many miles Sarah drives I'm going to multiply 58 by 4 so 58 by 4 
is equal to 232. So therefore, Sarah covers 232 miles. And that's your final answer. Question 10, write down all the prime numbers between 20 and 30. So there's only two prime numbers between 20 and 30. They are 23 and 29. So that's our final answer, 23 and 29. Catherine says two is the only even prime number. B, is Catherine right? You must give a reason for your answer. Yes, Catherine is right. That's because all other even numbers have two as a factor. Question 11a, solve x plus x plus x equals 51. So the first thing I'm going to do is to collect like for like terms. So we have 1x plus 1x plus 1x, which gives me 3x equals 51. Now it's very important to remember that whenever there's a variable next to a number, it means we're going to multiply the two terms together. So we have 3 times x equals 51. So we need to isolate the variable x. To do that, we're going to be using the inverse operation of multiplication, which is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. So we have x on this side. And 51 divided by 3, which is 17. So our final answer is x equals 17. 11b, solve y over 4 equals 3. So we have y divided by 4. Now again, the inverse operation of division is multiplication. So I'm going to try to isolate the variable y and make it on its own on the left hand side. To do that, I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. So essentially what we should have is y is equal to 3 times 4. So y is equal to 12, and that's our final answer. 11c, 2f plus 7 equals 18. So my first step is to minus 7 from both sides. Again, so 7 minus 7 equals 0, so it cancels out. We have 18 minus 7, which is 11, so we should have 2f equals 11. Now this is very similar to question 11a. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So what we should have, so f is equal to 5.5. .5. So f, oops. So f is equal to 5.5. .5. And that's our final answer. Question 12. A group of football fans were asked what their halftime snack was. The table below gives information about their answer. Snacks. Burgers. Number of fans. 11. Pie. 17. Hot dog. 8. Draw an accurate pie chart for this information. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add the frequencies together. So 11 plus 17 plus 8 equals 36. Now what do I need to multiply 36 by to give us 360? Well, the answer is 10. So I'm going to multiply each of these frequencies by 10, which will give us the degrees. So this by 10, this by 10, this by 10. So 11 times 10 is 110 degrees. 17 times 10 is 170 degrees. And 8 times 10 is 80 degrees. Now I'm going all I need to do all I need to do now is just construct my pie chart. What I've done now is constructed my pie chart. So this angle over here from this line to this line is 170 degrees. This angle from here is 110 degrees 
and this angle over here is 80 degrees. Question 13. A scout group has a raffle to raise money for charity. There is one prize to be won in the raffle. Laura buys 12 raffle tickets. A total of 350 raffle tickets are sold. Find the probability that Laura does not win the prize. So Laura buys 12 raffle tickets. I'm going to subtract that from 350. So 350 minus 12 is equal to 338 tickets. Therefore, the probability that Laura does not win the prize is 338 over 350. And that's your final answer. Question 14. Each worker in a factory is either left-handed or right-handed. 22 of the 45 workers are male. 16 of the 34 right-handed workers are female. Complete the frequency tree for this information. So what we know so far is that there are 22 males. So 22 goes over here. And therefore this is going to be 23 females. And it says 16 of the 34 right-handed workers are female. So 16 goes over here. The rest are male. So 18 goes over here. Just going to complete it now. So that's going to be 4. And that's going to be 7. And that's your final answer. Question 15. Mary needs to work out the size of the angle X in the diagram. She writes... X equals 63 degrees because base angles of an isosceles triangles are equal. Mary is wrong. Explain why. The reason why Mary is wrong is because X over here is not the base angle. Okay, so base angle should be over here, which is 63. So the angle x is not the base angle should be 54 degrees. William needs to work out the size of the angle y in the diagram. William writes angle egh equals 57 degrees. Reason because corresponding angles are equal. Y equals 180 minus 57 degrees. Therefore, Y is equal to 123 degrees because angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. One of William's reasons is wrong. B. Write down the correct reason. Well, the correct reason is that co interior angles, these two angles, need to add up to 180. So Co interior angles need to add up to hundred and eighty degrees. That's the correct reason. Marla buys some bags of button. There are nineteen buttons or twenty buttons or twenty one buttons or twenty two buttons in each bag. Table gives some information about the number of buttons in each bag. The total number of buttons is 320. Complete the table. So by looking at the table, I know that seven bags contain 20 buttons. I want to work out the total. So I'm going to multiply 20 by 7, which equals to 140. There are three bags that contain 21 buttons. So again, I'm going to multiply 20. 1 by 3 which is 63 and there's one bag that contains 22 buttons which is 22. I'm now going to add all the buttons together so 140 plus 63 plus 22 is 225 it says the total number of buttons is 320 so what I need to do, I need to 320 minus 225, which is 95. 
So to work out the frequency, I'm going to divide 95 by 19. So 95 divided by 19, which equals to 5. The frequency is 5, and that's your final answer. Question 17. Here is a list of ingredients for making 30 biscuits. Lucas has the following ingredients. 900 grams of butter, 1,000 grams of caster sugar, 1,000 grams of plain flour, 225 grams of chocolate chips. What is the greatest number of biscuits Lucas can make? You must show your working. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to divide the ingredients that Lucas has with the ingredients of making 30 biscuits. So butter. Lucas has 900 grams of butter. So 900 grams of butter divided by 225, which equals to 4. Focus on caster sugar. So we have thousand grams divided by a hundred and ten grams which equals to nine point oh nine recurring move on to plain flour so we have a thousand grams divided by 275 grams which equals to 3.6 unit and then we have chocolate chips so 225 grams divided by 75 grams which equals to 3 so the minimum set of biscuits Lucas can make is 3 so I'm going to multiply 3 by 30 which is 90 biscuits so the maximum number of biscuits that Lucas can make is 90 biscuits and that's your final answer Question 18. Describe fully the single transformation that maps shape A onto shape B. So the answer is reflection and it reflects off the y-axis. So reflection of the y-axis. That's your final answer. Question 19. If armor has a field in the shape of a semicircle of diameter 50 meters, the farmer asks Jim to build a fence around the edge of the field. Jim tells him how much it would cost. Total cost equals 29 pounds and 86 pence per meter of fence plus 180 pounds for each day's work. Jim takes three days to build the fence. Work out the total cost. Now the first thing we need to do is to calculate the length of the circumference. To do this, we're going to be using this general equation. So, circumference is equal to 2 pi r. Now, the radius is half the diameter, so half of 50 meters is 25 meters. So, we should have 2 times pi times 25 meters. This should equal to 157.0796327 meters. Now bearing in mind that this is half a circle, I'm going to divide the length of the circumference by 2. Therefore, the length of this semicircle, the circumference length, is 
one, six, three, four meters. Now I need to work out the perimeter of this fence. To do this, I'm going to be adding the length of the semicircle and 50 meters together. So we should have 78.5398163 meters plus 50 meters, which should equal to 128.5398163 meters. Now it clearly states in the question that it would cost £29.86 per metre. Therefore I need to multiply 128.5398163 by £29.86. So, which equals to 3,838.198916. We're not finished yet. We still need to add 180 pounds per day. So Jim, it'll take Jim three days. So I need to add this to the total. So what I'm gonna do now is open brackets, 180 pounds times by three plus 3,838.198916, which should equal to 4,378 pounds and 0.989 one six. I need to round this to one decimal place, so therefore our answer should be four thousand three hundred and seventy eight point two. And that's our final answer. Question one a simplify m cubed times m raised to the power of four. When the base variable or numbers are the same and we're multiplying, we must add the powers together. So essentially what we have is m cubed times m raised to the power of 4. The base variable m are the same, so we're going to add the powers together. So our answer is m raised to the power of 7. So our final answer is m raised to the power of 7. 1b. Simplify open brackets 5np cubed close brackets raised to the power of 3. I'm just going to rewrite this question as 5np cubed times 5n p cubed times 5n p cubed. Now I'm going to multiply the numbers and variables together. So I'm going to start off by multiplying all the fives together. So we have 5 times 5 times 5, which gives me 125. Now I'm going to multiply the n variables together. So we have n times n times n, which is n cubed. And then we're going to multiply the p variables together. So we have p cubed times p cubed times p cubed. Now remember, if the base variables are the same, we're going to add the powers together. So you have p raised to the power of 9. Now I'm going to put it all together. So our final answer is 125 n cubed p raised to the power of 9. 1c. Simplify 32 q raised to the power of 9 r raised to the power of 4 divided by 4 q cubed r. It's important to remember when you're dividing and the base variables are the same, we're going to subtract the powers. 
So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to divide 32 by 4. So 32 divided by 4 equals 8. I'm then going to divide q raised to the power of 9 by q raised to the power of 3. So q raised to the power of 9 divided by q raised to the power of 3. Now again, it's important to remember that if the base variables are the same and we're dividing, I'm going to subtract the indices. So we should have q raised to the power of 6. I'm now going to divide r raised to the power of 4 by r. So r raised to the power of 4 divided by r is equal to r cubed. I'm going to put the answers together. So our final answer should be 8 q raised to the power of 6 r cubed. So that's our final answer. Find the lowest common multiple, LCM, of 40 and 56. To solve this question, we're going to be using prime factor decomposition. Uh, so we're going to find the prime factors of 40. So 2, 20 over here. We have 2 again, 10 over here, and we have 5 and 2. So prime factor, prime factor, prime factor, and the last prime factor is 5. Do the same procedure again with 56, so 56. 2 and 28, 2 and 14, and 7 and 2. So the prime factors are 2, 2, 2, and 7. I'm then going to construct a Venn diagram. So we have 40 and 56. The common prime factors go in the middle. So the common prime factor are 2, 2 and 2. So there's three 2's go in the middle. So the first 2 here, second 2 here, and the last 2 here. Uh, 5 goes over here and 7 goes over here. Now to find the lowest common multiple we're going to multiply all the numbers in both the circles. So LCM equals 5 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 7 which equals to 280. So the answer is 280. Question 2b, write down the highest common factor, HCF, of A and B. So again, to answer this question, we're going to construct a Venn diagram. So A, B. The common prime factors are 3, 5, 2, and 2. A, last two remaining here. And on this side we have 5. Now to find the highest common factor we need to multiply the numbers in the middle. So it's 3 times 5, which is 15, times again by 2, which is 30, times again by 2, which is 60. 
So our answer is 60. Question 3. The line L is shown on the grid. Find an equation for L. So the first thing I need to do is select two points on the graph. I'm going to select this point over here, which is 2, 0. And this point over here, which is 0 and minus 6. So let me just write this out over here. We have 0 and minus 6. And we have 2 and 0. I'm then going to label them x1, y1, x2, y2. So this is x1, this is y1, this is x2, and this is y2. Now I'm going to find the gradient of the line. So we're going to be using this general equation. So the gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now I'm just going to substitute the values into the equation. So, so y2 is 0 minus y1 which is minus 6 over x2 which is 2 minus x1 which is zero. So zero minus minus six is six. Two minus zero is two. Simplify it further. So therefore the gradient, a uh, gradient is three. So we have, so far, equation of the line is 3x plus c. Now c is where the line crosses at the y-axis. So if we look at the graph, the line crosses the y-axis at minus 6. So therefore c is minus 6. So our final answer should be y equals 3x minus 6. That's the final answer. Question 4. Raya buys a van for £8,500 plus VAT at 20%. Raya pays a deposit for the van. She then pays the rest of the cost in 12 equal payments of £531.25 each month. Find the ratio of the deposit Raya pays to the total of the 12 equal payments. Give your answer in a simplest form. So the first thing we need to do is work out how much Raya pays for the van in total, which includes VAT. So we're going to multiply 8,500 by 1.2, which equals to 10,000 and 200 pounds it says in the question that Raya pays 531 pounds and 25 pence each month for 12 months so that is let me just quickly do the math 531 pounds and 25 pence for 12 months we're going to multiply that by 12 which equals to 6,375 pounds. To work out her deposit, we're going to minus 6,375 pounds from 10,200. So that is 10,200. minus 6,000 
375, which equals to 3,825 pounds. So her deposit is Three thousand eight hundred and twenty five pounds. So the question states that we need to form a ratio of the amount of deposit to twelve equal payments. Okay, so the deposit to twelve equal. Payment We know what the deposit was, so the deposit was three thousand eight hundred and twenty five pounds. And the equal payment was twelve equal payments was six thousand. Three hundred and seventy five pounds. Now I'm going to divide both sides by three thousand eight hundred and twenty five pounds. So divide both sides by three thousand eight hundred and twenty five pounds, which gives us a ratio of one to five over three. Now I'm going to simplify it further by multiplying both sides by 3. So 3 times 1, which is 3. 3 times 5 over 3, which is 5. So our ratio is 3 to 5. Complete the table of values for y equals x squared minus x minus 6. So when x equals negative 2, Just going to substitute it into this equation to give us the value of y. So y equals open brackets minus 2 raised to the power of 2 minus minus 2 close brackets minus 6 equals 0. Okay, so first box over here should be 0. Now what x is equal to minus 1. I'm going to re repeat the same procedure again. So y equals open brackets minus 1 close brackets raise it to the power 2 minus open brackets minus 1 close brackets minus 6 equals minus 4. So we have minus 4. Uh, when x equals to positive 1, so we have x equals to 1, again substitute into the equation, so open brackets 1 raised to the power of 2 minus open brackets 1 close brackets minus 6, which equals to minus 6, so we should have minus 6 over here. When x equals to 2, y equals to open bracket 2 raised to the power of 2 minus open brackets 2 close brackets minus 6 equals minus 4. So this is minus 4. And when x equals to 3 again substitute into the equation so we should have open brackets 3 raised to the power of 2 minus open brackets 3 close brackets minus 6 which equals to 0 5b on the grid Draw the graph of y equals x squared minus x minus 6 for the values of x from minus 3 to 3. 
So from the previous question, we were able to complete the table and find the values of x and y. So I'm just going to plot these coordinates now. So we have minus 3 and 6. So minus 3 and 6 is over here. We have minus 2 and 0, minus 2 and 0. We have minus 1 and minus 4. So minus 1 and minus 4. We have 0 and minus 6. So 0 and minus 6 is over here. We have 1 and minus 6. So 1 and minus 6. We have 2 and minus 4. So 2 and minus 4. We have 3 and 0. So 3 and 0 goes over here. Now all I'm going to do now is join the points together. So that's our answer to uh, 5b. 5b. Use your graph to find estimates of the solution to the equation x squared minus x minus 6 equals minus 2. So what we need to do next is to draw a horizontal line from minus 2. Now once we've drawn the, the horizontal line from minus 2, we can read the values of x where the line intersects the curve. So let me just quickly draw a horizontal line from minus 2. Right. Now I'm just going to read off where the line intersects. So going upwards. So one value of x is roughly minus 1.6 and the other value going upwards is and x equals uh, 2.6 and that's our final answer. So we have x equals minus 1.6 and x equals 2.6. Question 6. A force of 70 newtons acts on an area of 20 centimeters squared. The force is increased by 20 newtons. The area is increased by 10 centimeters squared. Helen says the pressure decreases by less than 20%. Is Helen correct? You must show how you get your answer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the original pressure. So O, which stands for the original pressure. Original pressure is equal to 70 newtons divided by 20 centimeters squared. So the original pressure is 3.5 newtons per centimeter squared. The new pressure is, so N, which stands for new, pressure is equal to 80 newtons divided by 30 centimeters squared which equals to 2.6 reoccurring newtons per centimeter squared. Now to find the percentage change we're going to be using this general equation so if you remember percentage change equals new minus the old divided by the old. So the new was 2.6 reoccurring minus the old which was 3.6 5 divided by the old 3.5 oops
which equals to 0 0.238095 minus, sorry. So I'm going to multiply it by 100, so to give us a percentage, so it'll be minus 23.8%. Therefore, Helen is wrong, because it's not less than 20%, so minus 23%. Question 26. Here is a triangular prism. Work out the volume of the prism. Give your answer correct to three significant figures. So the first thing we need to do is we need to calculate the base of this triangle from this point to this point. And the way we can do this is by using Pythagoras theorem. So it's very important to remember that Pythagoras theorem states a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And this only applies if the triangle is a right angle triangle. So the hypotenuse is 8.4. The height could be either a or b. I'm going to say b. So what we, what we have is a squared equals c squared minus b squared. I've just rearranged it to make a subject. Uh, I'm just going to fill in the details now. So a squared is equal to 8.4 squared minus 7.2 squared. Again, Make a, a the subject and square root that, which is so, therefore, a is equal to 4.3266131. Now I need to find the area of the cross section of the triangle. So what we have so far, sorry for this sketch, is that the height of this triangle is 7.2 and the base is 4.3266131. Now to find this area over here, we need to do height times base divided by 2. So area of triangle Is equal to 7.2 times 4.3266131 divided by 2 which equals to 15.5729815 sorry did I say that so it's 15.57598151 centimeters squared. Okay, now to find the, uh, the volume, all we need to do is multiply it by the width. So 15.57598151 centimeters squared times it by 18 centimeters which equals to 280.3676678 centimeters cubed. The answer says that we need to round it up to three significant figures. So the, the final answer is 280 centimeters cubed. That's your final answer.